in the five x side. <laughs> you want to give us five seconds? All right, we'll count down from here. All right, we are live, Baru, on Rise Up, where we talk about responsibility, integrity, service, and empathy in action. And what I like to say, learn what's going on in the world and the difference that I can make. We've got Ricky DeSena here in our studio. Hello. Iris Kovic. Hello. Uh, Nari can make it. Uh, she didn't say why, but I can probably guess. It can do with kids and stress and whatever in life, uh, that's, which is... Which is, which is very important, let's not forget. We've got a pretty cool show for you today. Um, some stories about climate change and some feels, good feels from Iris. Uh, and I'm gonna give a little kind of reflective talk at the end, uh, you know, kind of in light of, you know, let's, let's keep uh, Afghanistan and our prayers and our thoughts uh, and you know, continue to support whatever way we can. Um, so let's get into our show now. Uh, we will, you know, talk about something other than Afghanistan. But let's, Rick, let's go to you, and we've got to start from the UN on uh, climate change. Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you, Mohan. Uh, so yeah, for this week, uh, I want to uh, maybe just give some background, some context to uh, what's going on in Haiti. As many as you know, uh, Haiti was hit by. Uh, hurricane, also an earthquake recently as well. And, you know, as, as horrible as, you know, it's going on in Haiti, I think, you know, it's good to understand, like, also the, the surrounding kind of, like, situation with Latin America. Uh, because actually they're, Latin America as a whole uh, is one of the biggest uh, sources of uh, carbon sinks. Uh, so, you remember I talked about carbon sinks, you know, they, that's what produces carbon or sorry, that's what reduces carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, and yeah, they have uh, the Amazon rainforest and a lot of other rainforests, you know, throughout the country, uh, a lot of it is in South America, Latin America, where you see a lot of it in Central America as well. And yeah, they, or Latin America is such a huge, uh, uh, part of the global ecosystem uh, because of that. Uh, so what you're seeing now is actually um, the climate uh, emergency that we're seeing is adversely affecting uh, what is supposed to be a solution to you know, uh, the climate emergency, which is these carbon sinks, which is reducing the carbon in the atmosphere, which you know at the moment, I think we're producing more than we are uh, reducing. Uh, so the problem with you know uh, the common emergency is you know with the rising temperatures rising sea levels and more important the wildfires you're seeing that a lot of uh these forests amazon forests uh but also um coastal forests as well is that they're you know they're being destroyed by these wildfires so what you're getting is this kind of like situation where uh the things that's supposed to be protecting us uh, from uh, climate change are, are being destroyed by the effects of climate change. Um, so yeah, I think it's like a really interesting like case study in, you know, you know what happens when uh, there's this this kind of like situation where uh, climate change is affecting, you know, what what's supposed to be our protection. Uh, so I think you know this, some of the well, I think what we can take from this is that. Uh, we need to be more um, aware of protecting these areas, um, but also like actively um, expanding uh, because they are being destroyed, like either nationally or intentionally by you know companies that you know use the wood from the forest. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically the situation, and you know I think it's just uh, good to understand you know how important these forests are. Uh, but also, like, yeah, it's, it's a really serious situation we're, we're in when um, the thing that's supposed to be protecting us is being destroyed from the thing we're trying to protect from. I don't know if that makes sense, but, yeah. What we're trying to protect is the environment, the art. Yeah. The so we're, we're trying to protect uh, the forests forest. because they protect us from the increasing 
uh, levels of carbon in the atmosphere. Gotcha. So it's like it's kind of it's kind of a compounded problem. Yeah. Like it's yeah. like you we talk about okay, Paris Agreement, keep it under two degrees Celsius, right? We're at one point five, but how much are we factoring in the compounded effect of the forest fires, you know, on top of the trees we're already cutting down and all the other stuff we're doing? So yeah. it's like we 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 need to be uh kind of hyper attentive to attentive. this could just take off if if we're not uh you know we, we can kind of project kind of where this would go at the rate yeah. going, but it could be much worse than what we projected is what we're saying yeah it's we use the word compounded i would, I would also use the word like exponential right because as as we lose some of these forests you know the the carbon in the atmosphere increases and that it creates wildfire to destroy you know even more force but it's almost like an exponential kind of situation where it gets worse and worse over time and faster over time to the environment right that that makes sense to me and i was reading an article just now and it says like in some places it's 10 degrees celsius above normal yeah 10 degrees when Fahrenheit, that's whatever that is, 22 or something. I don't know what that is, but uh, if I do the math, that's fine with me. But so we need to, we need to, we need to kind of wake up, and it's like we need to we need to read these articles. We need to know what's happening. So even though here I am, I got my lights on, and I'm, you know, this energy is using carbon. I was putting it in the air. So we need to get creative. We need to. Reduce our, you know, reduce our emissions. Uh, and this micro and macro actions we can take. And, and uh, I think youth, I think we're the ones to. Sorry, right now I'm on, I'm on this kind of. Uh, this crusade. crusade. <laughs> I'm on a crusade. To, to just kind of wake up our youth, you know. I think, I don't know if you, if it's just me, but I feel like the age of maturity is getting like older and older like it's like when you were if you were like an 18 year old during world war ii obviously you're very mature because you're about to go into battle and you want to you want to make sure you're voting rights and stuff like this but we have people like you know i'm 34 years old i can tell you like i was not like an adult a real mature adult at like 21. so i feel like our youth need to kind of see themselves as the, the 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 present leadership you know and help apply creative solutions to the problems that we're seeing uh and, and not looking to someone else uh to figure things out all the time i don't know that's just kind of what my my, my feeling is um anyway that's my yeah i mean i can totally relate to that wavelength of um, the youth needing to take power and us rising up to the call, I think, because I, I see more and more that our generation is realizing just how, how tied up our like bureaucratic and governmental systems are. And that um, if we do want real change, we have to take responsibility ourselves. Otherwise, decisions will be made for us. I think this is what this is going back to what we were talking about a couple of weeks ago about um, taking responsibility to have power in the things that happen so that things don't happen to us. Instead, we're the ones creating change um, by taking responsibility to make that change. And yeah, a lot of our young people now are realizing that if we want things to get done, then we're the ones that are going to have to do it and just suck it up because everything else is going to take way too long, especially on such a tight timer as like just a, such a crazy ticking time bomb this world is in terms of like global climate change, you know? So we can't wait for our governmental systems to do something even though it's it should be their responsibility it ideally should be them taking care of all these situations in the first place and solving these issues 
but unfortunately that's not the case that's not the world that we live in yet um so until that happens we have to step up and yeah i mean with the whole being aware of how much energy we're using and what are different just daily actions um what the effects of those daily actions like you said turning on the lights using the bathroom um driving your car things like that we don't realize the impact the compounded impact they have on other nations like how we were saying last week about the um or the week before about the small island nations that are affected on other continents because of climate change and water rising and all those things i mean yeah i looked at the article it's it's not just the pandemic it's also yeah again our compounded actions that are causing water levels to rise land is being lost because of it and without land people can't make money and a lot of these nations are just living off of um agri- their agricultural value and things like that so it's just yeah being aware of the effects of our actions even though it happens so far away from us we live in a world that's so interconnected now because of things like the internet and social media that we don't have an excuse to ignore it and exactly you know just before this show we were talking about this intergenerational cooperation right with uh, like a whole organization not knowing how to use google docs for example and yeah. But when you cross that bridge and you're all using Google Docs, again, I'm not advertising Google per se, but I'm saying that when we can utilize this this collaborative technology and communications through social media, then we can actually help. You know, I, I feel like the, the, the generation that's kind of running things in the world today, they need more help than they know and or are willing to admit they need help from from all of us and and oh i guess third is they don't know how how do you reach the younger generation keep our interest um it's like if you know we love TikTok so much well then we need to use this technology to make this an urgent matter because when you're at war it's extremely urgent it's like coming at you but it's a different kind of war we have right now absolutely Uh, and it's, a, it's one that kind of creeps up on you. It's hard to really feel it, but it's getting more and more obvious. But at what point is it so bad that it's almost almost irreversible? <laughs> but is if there's a, like a too late point, I'd like to know what that is. So we make sure we come nowhere near it. Um, Anna Ricky, is, is there, a, is there a, a too late point for, for all of us? Or are we just gonna all migrate to Canada and just, I mean, yeah, obviously there's a point where it's like, it's too late and you just have to deal with the consequences of our actions, but uh, I don't think it's, yeah, productive to think that way. I think, you know, we we got to do now is just like, like you said, you know, we're at war, we got to focus on the task at hand, um, just one step at a time, do what we got to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I got a, a warning today, the air quality is not great in New Jersey because of the fires, I think. Mm-hmm. They're uh, putting smoke in the air. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about it. I'll probably step outside sometime today. For a mask. We all we love masks, right? We love it. They're, they're multi purpose, aren't they? Remember, keep the straps <laughs> off of your Yeah, mask. take the straps off or put them in your garbage can. Okay. Okay. I mean, I just reuse them forever, so I don't have to throw them out. Reusable, there you go. See, Ricky, you're, <laughs> you're right, Ricky, I should be washed. But then he uses water and all that anyway. Okay, thank you, Ricky. Iris? All yes. right, I know we bring up some heavy topics, guys. It's not easy to face the world and all of its issues because it's all complex. It's all tied up together. But that being said, there's still some positivity and hope in this world, okay? That is why I'm here. That's why it's not just Bill Hunt and Ricky here, all Thank right? You. I'm here to, it's not, I'm not just here to lighten the mood. I'm here to inspire you 
to act on your hope and to act on your desire for a better world, or at least a less crappy world, okay? So yes. with that being said, here's my first story. Now, okay, I do make an effort to try and bring stories from the US because it hits closer to home, but this being from an Olympic, an Olympian, I felt was just incredible. And I mean, we're all part of a global village anyway. So Polish track and field Olympian, uh, mind you, this is her first Olympic medal ever, auctioned off her silver medal to raise money for a boy's heart surgery. Now, the Olympian in question, Polish javelin thrower Maria Andrzejczyk, I'm supposed to be Polish um, only by last name, but hopefully I didn't butcher that. Maria Andrzejczyk um, auctioned off her first Olympic medal to raise money for... Um, a little boy surgery. He is eight months old. His name is Milocek uh, Malica um, to go to the U.S. for a life-saving um, operation or surgery. So right after she won, uh, she wrote on August 11th that Milocek has a serious heart defect and needs an operation, and would will auction off her medal to send them to send him and his family to the U.S. for this surgery. And so her goal was $190,000 um, for the operation. And um, then actually the Polish store chain, Zabka, um, I actually went to, I was in Poland for a bit, a couple of years back before the pandemic, and I did see this store. So it's nice to see it pop up again. Um, Zabka actually won the action um, and wanted to, they were so moved that this representative of their country was so selfless in helping this child that they wanted to not only win the auction, but let her keep the medal and saying that they were so moved by her heart and just the willingness that she had to help this child. And so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. I mean, it's an incredible story and a symbol for again, just this selfless act and selfless attitude to help those in need with what you have. I mean, I know we don't all have an Olympic medal laying around that we can auction off for sure, but <laughs> it says a lot about how your, you can share your victories with others and use your victory, use your platform to spread even more good. She could have just held on to this moment for herself but no, she decided to pass it on to, she decided to use the energy from her win to support another family. And so since then, actually, since this article was posted August 17th, so since that Tuesday, the site in which she was raising money for this auction has raised $346,000. So almost double, I believe, if not more than double the original goal of 190,000. And so I'm sure this family is elated and touched by the international support for their son. So yeah, that's the first story. And the second story is I think a little bit easier for all of us to do. This is about a man from LaGrange, Anthony Talley, who wants to change the world $1 at a time. And yeah, I think the story is really cute and definitely gives us no excuse to not start our own project like this in our own community. So Anthony Talley um, started a um, started this project about a year ago, collecting one dollar from people around his community to donate to someone in need and showing that, yes, a small act of kindness can indeed add up. And so since he started this project about a year ago, he's raised $8,000 from his community, which primarily went towards helping a man who lost his home in a fire and then using some of the money to buy children at the local elementary schools, ice cream <laughs> and things like that. Just big and small actions all around that inspire people with um, that allow them to feel joy, feel cared for, especially since the money is coming from the community. And going back into the community, you really get the sense of being supported by your fellow man and neighbor around you. And yeah, so as he's going on with this program, um, his cash app 
if you're interested is dollar sign Anthony Maurice Tally or Venmo at Anthony Tally nine if you'd like to donate. In fact, today is on Thursdays. He has his one dollar Thursdays um, fundraising effort um, to yeah raise money. And currently, his um, his latest project is, is to help a mother of ten with uh, the purchase of a new car after her car was lost in an accident involving her daughter. So, yeah, in, in, in a local news article, he said, remember the goal is to change the lives of others one dollar at a time. And yeah, I mean, whether you decide to use your dollar to support Anthony or to support other charitable causes that you support, the goal is, again, yeah, he's right. Changing the world one dollar at a time. You can you have a lot of power with your dollar, more than you think. And depending on the businesses that you support, uh, whether they're local or they're global, the charities that you decide to support and things like that. So even if you don't start up your own <laughs> um, charity like Anthony here, Remember the value of your dollar and what, how much support comes with that. So if you want to use that to help Anthony or to help someone else, or at least just being aware of the effect your money has on others, that's, I think, a great place to start. So yeah, here are my two stories on two very different ends of the spectrum of hope and giving. But yeah, I <laughs> hope you enjoyed it at least. Wow, Iris. Thank you. We really needed that. These uh, these stories, they're a good reminder of what money is for. You know, I think it's, if we can see money differently, like it's not something to buy stuff with, but it's, it's, it's putting resources where it's needed. You know, I, it's like, if I need a sandwich in my stomach, then yeah, I'm going to use the money for that purpose. But it's, it's way more exciting to be able to give it to someone who needs it you know and uh and so i'm i'm moved by these stories uh, yeah i'm not surprised at all I mean, i'm not sure what value it is to get a silver medal of someone else I mean, it's like you didn't exactly put in the hours to you know achieve that medal um actually what did she uh what did she do in she, the, uh in the she was she competed in um javelin as a javelin oh, okay yeah, I think it's on the javelin. so like but yeah that that's yeah, amazing. And then the dollar. I feel like it's just like a like a like a reverse ice cream man, you know, going around and giving people money <laughs> instead of luring, you know, luring kids with uh, with with their with their money, but with their with ice creams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whenever whenever the ice cream truck comes around, it's like ice cream, like and like. I've never actually bought ice cream from ice cream trucks, from that <laughs> but they know what that is and they always want to go to it. But imagine if someone came around just giving ice cream, you know, although I might question like, why are you giving me for ice cream? But anyway. Uh, that would make my week, Milhan. Is there something in the ice cream? <laughs> why is it free? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. But see, that's the problem. We don't, we don't live in a society where there's any kind of trust uh, from strangers. Um, and I'm not sure when we're going to get to that day where, you know, we don't have to teach our kids about, oh, yeah, you know, don't take stuff from a stranger. Don't definitely don't go anywhere with a stranger. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe we'll get there someday. But I think money is a big part of it. I think it has to do with using money for where, where, where it's needed. Um, yeah, a lot more I could say on that. I was going to get into fundraising and all that, but I'll save it for another one. Yeah. And oh, I would just say, fun. I would just say it's a lot safer over there in the States. Like I can't play Pokemon Go here in the DR because somebody might steal my phone. Oh, <laughs> that's a problem. Wait, you say you can't play it over there? Well, I could, but somebody might steal my phone. Oh my God. Wait, wait, <laughs> where? Yes. In DR? In the, in the DR, yeah. If you walk around with your phone, somebody's like, oh, nice, free phone. And Yoink. Grab it. Yoink. And they run. <laughs> I see. All right, then we have to start like a online fundraiser <laughs> for Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I go Ricky. play where do I go again? <laughs> so sad. So sad. Uh but yeah, I, I think like if I can add on to that, um yeah, the, the story about the 
Polish track star building her uh, her medal was uh, really cool because well, well, for one, you know, it's um, it's a lot of work to get to that point. Like, especially this past Olympics is like, they've been training like so long and you can imagine like you have all that time training and you only, you only get one shot to like do well. Maybe like one or two shots, three shots if you can do a third Olympics. It's like it's every four years, it's hard. Uh, and to just like readily like give that up for someone else, I think gives you a lot of hope in humanity. Like, yeah, not a lot of people would do that, but you know, I think she showed that, you know, you can and it goes a long way. Um, yeah, I'm also not surprised, like, she's able to get that much money for it. I mean, people buy, like, napkins from celebrities for, like, millions of dollars. So. <laughs> and that, that seems pretty valuable, an entire silver medal. I see you're, you're shopping around, Ricky. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a friend of a friend, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you know, the story reminds me a lot of the Pokemon cards one. Remember the kid selling the Pokemon cards to help his dog? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not calling you know an eight month year old the dog here. Okay, what I'm saying is like it's like something that's so much more value to the person who's who's selling it than it is to obviously the buyer, right? Because so, but that but again, it's like that's how much this means to me. That's 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 the message that comes across, and um, I'm so glad it did. So yeah, I'm that I'm happy for this boy who um, has a chance at life. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Iris. Anytime. <laughs> Any and every time. Almost. All right. To, to wrap up here, my talk is the title of it, if there is one, is the importance of synergy. You know, synergy in general, like the like, intergenerational collaboration or the, the, the program that we do called Synergy. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. It's basically a mix of TED Talks, having these these ideas that can change the world, and then mix that with Shark Tank, where you, you present these ideas in front of an expert panel, and they give you feedback and and judge to see which one has the best, so that they can get a a cash prize and advance to another round where they can really spread their awareness of their cause or their idea. Um, you know, this thing is like. It's not about the cash prize. I think it's this is about having some real ways to make change in the world. I feel like, you know, we were just talking about this earlier just now, where I feel like a lot of the youth, we don't really see ourselves as change agents. We kind of see ourselves as like, oh, yeah, if I can just get through this week or, you know, if I can get $12 an hour or, you know, get bumped up to $13 an hour or if I can go to college or... I mean, these things are not, we don't realize our potential with that sort of mindset. And the purpose of synergy is to say, no, no, no. Like we're sitting in meetings with congressional reps and they're telling us, please run for office, please help us, please contribute your ideas, your energy to make a change in the world. <clears throat> I'm telling you, if I mean, the consequence of the youth not stepping up Everything we see in the world, you can point to. Youth knew what was going on. Maybe youth probably could have had a chance to, to, to bring reconciliation between different parties. I mean, that happens all the time. Um, I think of what's going on in Afghanistan. I mean, if America was there for 20 years, that's a generation. So, like, what was, what happened? Um Again, I, I can't help, I can't not oversimplify it by saying this, but I think youth could have played a, bit, a bigger role and could have made sure that all children in Afghanistan um, can, can, can look at bigger problems in the world. And I know we've, there's a lot of reconciliation that still has to happen and not just the Middle East, but everywhere. But that youth can be a catalyst and a motivation for the people in power to uh, to work things out. And I'm telling you, I mean, I, I might be a youth, but I'm telling you when I get older, probably my 60s, 70s, 
I'll probably have some bad blood with people. You know, it's bound to happen. It just happens as you as you go throughout life, you accumulate bad blood. It's just because there's so much going on, and there's always communication misunderstandings as you go. But I'm I'm going to be looking to the youth when I'm 70 years old, I'm 60 years old, to say, hey, can you help be a catalyst to bridge? And help help us reconcile because we need that. So I hope our youth today can see. Look, we're going to be the ones to bridge the cultures, bridge the different ideologies or governance styles, and we're going to have to find a better way because you can't bring unity or harmony just by talking to each other. I mean, it's a start, but you're gonna you're gonna need some good ideas. I can't tell you how many times I've been in meetings where a meeting can go for like three hours or can go for like 15 minutes and accomplish the same amount of stuff. And the only difference is in the 15 minute meeting, somebody had a good idea and they voiced it and everyone's like, yep, nodding their heads, let's do that, moving on. But without the, the, without people thinking deeply about a problem and how to resolve it that's, that's comprehensive and inclusive, then we'll, you know, this will take forever. And it, you know, and it will be, you know, eventually it will be too late, Ricky. You know, we're gonna have a point where, all right, looks like it's hard to reverse at this point. So we're gonna have to get used to the new climate of the world. And all the cities will have to abandon in the deserts and uh, we'll just have to start over. Hey, and if it has to come to that, then, you know, we'll adapt, we always have. But uh, I think if the youth have, if we, if we have a vision, then I say we work on that. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, you can sign up for Synergy by going to yspusa.org. Click on Synergy, you can read all about it. And just start thinking your thoughts, okay, is, are priceless. It's not, you, you think, oh, what can I do? Well, we already have seen what, what you can do on your own. Just take some time, think about some of these issues in the world and, and, and come up with an idea. And please, please, we implore you to present them at Synergy. Let's do it. Absolutely. I mean, the projects that come out of Synergy are just incredible. I, I had the chance to see the online Synergy events that we've had for um, the past couple of years as well as even see them happen in places like Albania, because this is like an international um, program that we're talking about. And there are great ideas everywhere, was the conclusion I came to after listening to all of these talks. And that, um, yeah, the next great idea can come from anywhere, as long as you just put in enough thought and confidence in your value that what you're saying, Mohan, that like your ideas are valuable and deserve to be heard and acted upon if you and everyone else cares about the evolution of our human race, essentially. And yeah, I really feel that Synergy is doing a great thing at giving a platform and a space for youth to stand up and present their ideas and be heard um, it's not just like, oh, give a talk and then maybe someone will listen. It's actually held by um, competent panelists who have a lot of say and weight to their words and also have a lot of support backing them too that they could then bestow to the Synergy applicants. So there's a whole process in the program that really helps the participants feel supported and heard in their ideas. And I'm just sitting here thinking about what can I do like with my passion for fashion design to like bring about better awareness for like these global crises that we're undergoing and things like that. I mean, it's, it's a huge undertaking, but again, giving youth the platform to make a difference and to even just say their ideas in the first place is incredibly powerful and empowering and um yeah so i guess i guess it's our our turn or like our responsibility to do a better job at promoting synergy and things like that but yeah no i have a lot of hope in this program and in our youth standing up rising up and 
doing what's right for all of us, you know? I'm going to get that quote and put it on my wall. <clears throat> One of those <laughs> or all of them. Thank you. <laughs> Ricky, final word. Final word. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of that quote where it's like, you know, we're afraid that we're powerful beyond belief, right? Um, I think, you know, that's kind of like uh, our youth, this generation's youth kind of like motto, because I think we have so much to offer, but a lot of times like, you know, either we're afraid, you know, it's not good enough. Uh, we kind of like see, you know, people like doing a lot more than we are and kind of like downplay you know, what we can do. Um, yeah, I would, you know, I would just say like, you know, the, the power that we have is that, you know, we have hope and, you know, that hope can be a, you know, really big drive for change. And yeah, I would just say, just believe in what you can do and like believe in like your passion for something. Like if you find something that like you're really passionate about changing, you know, just like go for it, just start. And then, you know, you can figure out the details later. Let's start. Let's start right now. Yes. Let's do it. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Rise up, rising up, standing up, making a difference with your ideas. See you next week. Bye. Bye.